Okay, I'm ready to save out my barn1.psd as a JPEG, and of course I want the best looking image with the smallest file size that I can possibly get. So I'm going to head to my save for web and devices dialog. Once again, just a brief reminder, I could go save as, I could choose file save as and just save out a JPEG. I could try that, but again, it's not going to give me the, the level of control that the save for web and devices dialog box gives me. So go ahead and choose file save for web and devices. And as you can see here, the save for web and devices dialog box appears, but I'm still in this four up tab and it doesn't look like there's anything loading in here. Well, as a matter of fact, there is something loading in. It's just because my image is so huge, I'm looking at near white sky there. So there is an image in there. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I set the proper file format, which is gonna be JPEG, but I also wanna reduce down the dimensions of my image as well. So to keep things simple here, I'm gonna go back to my optimize tab, just so we see a single image there. Or if you want, you could go into your two up so you could compare the original with our optimized version. That's entirely up to you, but I'm gonna go with the optimized here. And over on the right hand side, I'm gonna make sure that my drop down menu is set to JPEG. I'm not gonna worry about my settings just yet. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head down to the image size area. Now. The barn photo is 2,560 pixels in width by 1,920 pixels in height. So in other words, he's huge, right? He's way too big to fit into a web design. I don't know if you remember from our exercises earlier on when we were building web layouts, but I said that the magic number for a 1024 by 768 monitor, the magic number for the width there was 960. I would never wanna have anything wider than that. Otherwise, I'm gonna get horizontal scrolling. So unless you wanna set up some kind of weird oddball website or you, know, you are intending on loading a massive image into a website and you understand and you know what you're doing, then what you wanna do is you wanna reduce this guy down. So. What I might do is I might already have a layout built in Dreamweaver and I might know, okay, I've created a placeholder inside my layout for an image that's gonna be 250 pixels or you know, in width, or it's gonna be 500 pixels in width or something like this, so you know ahead of time. So I'm gonna go with 500 pixels here. And my width and height are linked there, so the height automatically adjusts, which is just great. So I'm gonna hit enter there to lock in that change. And right away, we get that, that resizing there, which is great. Okay, now that that's set up, now I want to head to the top right and I wanna start crushing down the file size while trying to maintain my quality. You can see that my file size right now is 135K, which in web design terms is pretty huge, right? And right now my compression level is set to maximum, so I have the maximum amount of quality. So instead what I could do is I could go down to low and I could see how that looks, and maybe I wanna compare that back to the original, or maybe this is a situation where I could go into the two up and compare the top with the bottom. Now, you know, this actually looks pretty good. It's pretty darn good. We're all the way down to, I'm gonna say 11K. We're at 10.95K. That's nice and small and tight but we still have lots of quality inside this image. And you gotta remember that in web design or when people are surfing your website, they're not gonna zoom in on your images, right? So what we see here is exactly what the visitor is gonna see. And to me, it looks great. But what I could do is I could come up into this top area and I could fiddle around here. I could say, all right, how does medium look? How does medium compare to low? Or how does medium compare to high, right? Kind of go back and forth a little bit. I could get even finer by messing around with the quality slider. So for example, right now we're on a quality level of 30. I could try cranking that up towards 50, or I could try reducing it down. How does 30 compare to 20? How does that look? Does it look all right? Does it start to pixelate? This sort of thing, right? I can also mess around with some additional options like progressive. You might remember progressive from way back in the day when images would progressively load. You get a really pixelated image and then a slightly less pixelated image would load and then an even less pixelated image would load and then the final image would load in. I don't know if you remember that or not, but anyway, I usually don't bother with that. 
optimized. You can turn that guy on if you want. You can embed a color profile, but that may increase your file size. You can also use blur, which to me is completely useless because if I blur my image, I'm going to reduce down my file size even more. Right now I'm down to 8.8K, but I'm blurring my image. I don't want a blurry image, <laughs> so I never use blur. And you may also want to use a matte. If you have any transparent areas inside your images, you might want to use the matte option there. But I'm pretty happy with this. I'm all the way down at 20 for my quality level, and that looks pretty good. If our image were slightly larger, you would definitely see a loss in detail. But because we resized our image so small, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. I'll save this guy into my project files. And I'm just going to call this guy optimized hyphen barn one dot JPEG. And you want to make sure, by the way, when you're saving out your files for the web that you don't have any spaces in your names. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. The image is saved out. The save for web and devices dialog box closes and we're all the way back to Photoshop.